okay this was the last equation we draft in the previous video now we'll move, move forward the last equation was c is equal to n alpha over e raised to the power alpha minus e raised to the power minus alpha and we call it equation number 8 now suppose we have a magnet and we suppose that this is the north pole and this is the south pole and the direction of magnetic dipole moment is this one now if we apply the magnetic field to this bar magnet then this dipole moment magnetic dipole moment whose direction is this makes an angle theta with magnetic field so there are two components of this magnetic dipole moment this is mu m okay the component which is perpendicular to the field is mu m sine of theta this one and the component which is in the direction of magnetic field is mu m cos of theta now mu m cos of theta is the component of magnetic dipole moment m in the direction of b magnetic field now the total dipole moment due to all n particles per unit volume we call it magnetization and is represented by m which is defined as the orientation is from 0 to pi as I already mentioned before and the magnetic dipole moment in the direction of magnetic field is this one mu m cosine of theta into dn where n is the number of particle per unit volume so dn is the small number of particle in a unit volume this is the definition of uh, magnetization now using equation 4 equation 4 and suppose this is equation 9 in equation 9 we have uh, m is equal to integral from 0 to pi mu m cos of theta okay and for dn I will put the value from equation 1 which is c e raised to a power alpha cos of theta and then we have sine theta d theta where c is mu m n to b and alpha is equal to mu m b over kt we already did it before now m is equal to c and mu m are constant we will keep outside of the integral we have 0 to pi e raised to the power alpha cos of theta sine theta cos theta d theta now here to solve this integral we use supposition again suppose t is equal to cos of theta this implies that minus dt will be equal to sine theta d theta now the limit will change is from if theta is equal to 0 implies that t is equal to 1 and if theta is equal to pi implies that t is equal to minus 1 so the above equation now reduced to magnetization m is equal to c n to mu m and limit changes from 1 to minus 1 and then we have e raised to the power alpha for cos theta i will put t and sine theta d theta is dt and cos theta is t so this is t into minus dt or uh, this equation it can be written as c into mu m and the integration is from minus 1 to 1 e raised to the power alpha t 
and then we have the dt I remove that negative sign here and then I change the limits on the integral now this equation the solution of this equation is very simple so you people can do it by yourself I will write the end result which is m is equal to c into mu m into e raised to the power alpha x e raised to the power alpha plus e raised to the power minus alpha over alpha and then we have a minus sign e raised to the power alpha minus e raised to the power minus alpha over alpha square let's say this is equation number 11 and here we have this is equation number 10 okay the solution of equation 10, 10 is this one now using equation 8 and equation 10 instead of c we will use this value okay using equation 8 and 11 we have m is equal to for c i will replace n alpha mu m over e raised to the power alpha plus e raised no sorry minus e raised to the power minus alpha into e raised to the power alpha plus e raised to the power minus alpha over alpha minus e raised to the power alpha minus e raised to the power minus alpha over alpha square if we solve this then this alpha will cancel with this and this one so the final expression is m is equal to n into mu m into e raised to the power alpha plus e raised to the power minus alpha over e raised to the power alpha minus e raised to the power minus alpha minus 1 over alpha or oh, this can be written as m is equal to n into mu m e raised to power alpha plus e raised to power minus alpha over e raised to power alpha minus e raised to power minus alpha minus 1 over Now if we expand this this factor we get m is equal to n into mu m from this we will get cotangent hyperbolic alpha minus 1 over alpha where cotangent hyperbolic alpha is e raised to power alpha plus e raised to power minus alpha over e raised to power alpha minus e raised to power minus alpha now this equation can be written as m is equal to m naught l of alpha where we define m naught is equal to n into mu m which is the saturated magnetization we call it the saturated magnetization and l of alpha we define it to be cotangent hyperbolic alpha minus 1 over alpha and it is called Langevin function now we have to plot a relation for the Langevin function L of alpha is a function of alpha and alpha is mu m b or kt now if we look at this relation okay then from this relation we can say that Langevin function l alpha has values which changes from 0 to 1 the maximum value is 1 and the minimum value is 0 because this is a trigonometric relation so the maximum value of this L of alpha is this one and the minimum value is this one L of alpha is equal to 1 
and L of alpha is equal to zero. So this is the maximum limit. If we increase alpha, by increasing alpha means increasing B or decreasing B. So the graph will look like this. Now the curve indicates that for large value of alpha, that is for large B, if B is large, then alpha is large. Uh, if T is low, alpha is large. L of alpha tends to unity, means approaches to its maximum value 1. Okay? So if L of alpha has maximum value which is equal to 1 for large B. Once L of alpha is equal to 1, then from this relation we get M is equal to M naught. And it is the case, it is the case where all dipole ally itself in the direction of magnetic field so this is in up to this point we discuss the saturation condition and in the next video I will move forward and complete the Langevin paramagnetic equation uh, the Langevin equation for the paramagnetic material. Thank you.